Deconstructing standards is a very important skill that will really help you as you're working on your professional portfolio. Let's take a look at the ISTE Teacher Standard 1. Teachers use their knowledge of subject matter, teaching and learning, and technology to facilitate experiences that advance student learning, creativity, and innovation in both face-to-face -face and virtual environments. If you're like me, that bunch of words doesn't mean a lot. I, I look at standards and it sort of all runs together. I call it zone out language. I start to zone out by about the fourth word in this statement. And so deconstructing really helps to pick it apart and see what the standard is really expecting us to do. In this slide, you see the same standard, but the verbs are highlighted in red ink and the the nouns or noun phrases are in blue. So use, facilitate, and advance are verbs that pop out of you. I know what those words mean, so we can break this down even further. Here is this standard deconstructed. Our verbs are use and facilitate. Our nouns are knowledge and experiences. We're going to use knowledge. We're expected to use knowledge. We're expected to facilitate experiences. That makes more sense to me, but what are we using knowledge of? Well, according to the standard, we need to use our knowledge of the subject matter we're teaching. It might be English, math, social studies, science. We need to use our knowledge of teaching and learning or pedagogy, and we need to be able to use our knowledge of technology. We need to facilitate experiences that advance student learning, creativity, and innovation, and the other expectation is that we facilitate experiences in both face-to-face -face and virtual environments. So when we break it down like this, it's much simpler and more clear. Our next step is to rewrite it in an I can statement. So we personalize this and we say, I can do what this standard is calling for me to do as a teacher. On the left, you see the original standard. And here is the I can st statement. We deconstructed it, so we pulled apart the verbs and the nouns and the modifying phrases, and now we create this in something that really makes sense to us. I can use my knowledge of sub my subject matter, my teaching and learning and technology to improve student learning, creativity, and innovation in face-to-face -face and virtual environments. Now notice, the language really isn't that much different, but because we went through the process of deconstructing these statements, we're able to really understand what that means. I know what's expected of me out of this standard as a teacher. I know that I'm expected to use knowledge and improve student learning, and I'm gonna do it in face-to-face -face and virtual environments, and these are the specifics. The next thing we want to look at are the assumptions behind this I can statement. We've gotten the standard to where we can understand it and we put it in personal terms of what we can do individually. Now there's some assumptions behind there. In order to meet this standard, I have to know my subject area. I have to know about teaching and learning and I have to have knowledge and skills with technology. If I don't have those three things that are assumed, there's no way I'm going to be able to meet this standard. It also assumes that I may be teaching in both face-to-face -face and virtual environments. That's, we don't think about that, but there's a very good chance that you will be. And to meet this standard as a teacher, you must be prepared to teach in both face-to-face -face and virtual environments. The next step is to take these assumptions and move on to evidence. What is the evidence I can put in my portfolio to prove that I have met this standard? Well, I need to, it's assuming that I know my subject, so something that would show I have this knowledge of, of subject area teaching and learning and skills with technology, something that shows that, and something that shows that I can teach in both a face-to-face -face and virtual environment. So the next thing you do is think of things you've done or will be doing in this class that will be your evidence to prove that you have mastered this standard. One thing we're going to be doing in this class is a peer team teaching planning document. In order to plan 
the lesson that you're going to teach with your peer team, you have to show that you know about teaching and learning the subject and have knowledge and skills with technology. So that may be evidence that would fit with this standard well. A teaching reflection might fit with this standard because you could teach a, a section and then reflect on how your knowledge of your subject area, teaching and learning and technology were revealed in what you taught. And you might teach it partly face-to-face -face and partly virtual. And you could reflect on that too. We'll be doing an assignment with BlendSpace and it's a great tool to extend learning at home. You can use it in a face-to-face -face classroom but then extend and have that online component that your students use at a distance. This would be an excellent piece of evidence to so show you've mastered standard one. And finally, a lesson plan makeover. You may, we'll have a lesson plan makeover assignment later in the semester, and you may be able to use that to show that you've integrated technology into a subject area, and you've used pedagogical strategies that show you have knowledge of teaching and learning, and you may have a face-to-face -face and virtual component in that makeover. And that would cover all the bases and be perfect evidence. So here's the deconstructing standards process. You start by separating out by verbs and nouns. That helps you clarify the simplest level of what this standard is asking for. And once you've simplified that, separated those out, you can write a clear, simple, I can statement. That helps you personalize the standard into terms that you know, you understand, and that will lead you to the next thing. Help, help, once you understand it, you can identify the assumptions behind. There are always assumptions of knowledge and skills that you already have when you're looking at a standard. And then finally, you select your evidence that proves that you have mastered this standard. Now, selecting evidence in a portfolio is really hard if you don't understand what they're asking for. That's the importance of deconstructing standards. This process also works with the Oklahoma Academic Standards or National Common Core Standards, and it helps you articulate to your students the expectations of the standards they are going to meet. An idea would be to conduct an internet search for ICANN statements in your grade level or content area. I guarantee you'll find a bunch, and Pinterest is a great place to look at this because a lot of them have posters already made. Now, the great thing about ICANN statements, they come from deconstructed standards, and they are a way that is clear and simple communication of what is expected by that standard. I've seen teachers use these with parents to give them a copy of the ICANN statements instead of the copy of the formal standards, and that way the parent can sit down with the child and the child can take responsibility and take ownership of their own learning by saying, I can do this and check it off. I can do this and check it off. And then they're taking responsibility and mastering their own learning. So this is a really important lesson, this deconstructing standards. If you have any questions, let me know.